you're listening to Historically Accurate Sandcastles, the podcast that isn't about sandcastles, historically accurate otherwise. My name is Polly Jean Harrison and it has been a while. Yes. Hello everyone, it's been a while. Uh, so, life happened. Yeah, did, did anyone else notice that the world went to shit? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 2020, we were do- when, when did the last podcast come out? I genuinely can't remember, shall I Google it? By the way, I'm here as ever with uh, the lovely Mr Thomas Corbett. Thank you. Um, how are you Thomas? I'm very well, thank you, very well indeed. Uh, what is your fun fact? My fun fact is that I got the results of my master's yesterday. Yes. And this bitch got a distinction. Yes. We've kind of known that for a while, but now it has been confirmed. Well, I did the maths. You did the and maths. And the maths was like, yes, you've got a 99.9999. But let's not forget, I am terrible at maths, so mm. it's always good to check. We're looking at it, Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day was the very last podcast. <laughs> Which is fitting. I don't, I, see, that's weird to me. I didn't realise that. I swear we did one after Valentine's Day. I, well, as you'll find out, dear listener, we've got two or three recorded. No, 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 I remember, I swear we, because, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. There's we two have, or three recorded as well. We did basically, got ones to come. back in lockdown, we did a couple then, but. Because I was doing the aforementioned masters and getting a job and just uh, just stressing about life mm. and doing a lot of work and doing like twelve hour days, mm. uh, I didn't edit them and I couldn't be bothered. So they've gone into the podcast bank mm. and now then not irrelevant because I do want to post them because they were fun. Mm. But in the same breath, I thought we should do just a, like a, a state of the podcast yes. before I go back into the archive, if you will, and post out those old ones. Though annoyingly. Dear listener, this is the second state of the podcast oh, we, catch up. We you're going to talk about that. I am because I'm angry. We did a whole <laughs> podcast, a whole hour podcast the other day, and it turns out it was so, good as well. It was a good podcast, and someone's mic was on bloody mute, <laughs> and I have never been more cross. Uh, so yeah, we is, pressed pause and suddenly went, oh, oh this, no, this is this is round two. Yes, but um, Thomas, what's your fun fact? And I'm making a good one. Uh. So you said make it a good one. Uh, my fun fact. I was one of the first ever years at Aberystwyth University to receive an award for being part of a society because beforehand it was just for uh, sports clubs and then in my third year they changed it that academic clubs could get university colours. So I actually have full university colours of the University of Aberystwyth. Oh, there you go. Hmm. That was a good fun fact. And what society was that? That was the international... Um, Crisis Game Society. Mm. And what did you do in that society? I was the secretary of that society. What What was the function of the oh. society? Sorry, I should have phrased that yes. question better. Um, if you've ever heard of Model United Nations, it's that, but it's more interactive. So it's more of the crisis games. So You basically play at being different countries, don't you? Different mean? countries, but you're... You Reacting have a, to yeah, certain... Yeah, you have a role within. Rather than being the United Nations where you debate and you go through procedure and motions and voting... It's more like being in a strategy game, but you're the actual team and the... We used to do a lot at Gleganock Hall, uh, which... Apparently is not pronounced that way. But apparently it's not pronounced that way. Because we um, went the other day. Yes. Not the other... I say the other day. It was like a month ago. Mm, um, for reasons. For reasons. For reasons. And... <laughs> What's scoping out wedding venues? <laughs> that's, not, that's not subtle. Even though we're not engaged. Hi, Auntie Jane. Because I know you're listening to oh. me. Oh, no, Auntie Jane. <laughs> Auntie Jane, no, we're not engaged, I promise. <laughs> we'd have told you, Auntie Jane. Yeah. Auntie Jane, that, we'd have told you. At that point, we would have definitely told you. Uh, oh, should I cut that bit out then? Probably. Or is that funny? That's funny. I we'll think see. it's funny. Can we just keep it in and you tell Auntie Jane not to listen? No, Auntie Jane <laughs> listens. Because <laughs> I know when she came into the shop, she was like, oh, our last podcast was the uh, Valentine's one. It's like, oh. <laughs> Look, it? we have a lot of avid fans of this podcast. Yeah, mostly it seems to be people... Um, it's mainly your family. Yeah. <laughs> my <laughs> sister listens. I don't know about the other Which one. Which one? Becca. Um, <laughs> my sister, you have two. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I know that. Yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> I mean... I used to have one, but then the other one uh, was born and I got kicked out of my bedroom. But we gloss over, over that. that one. Uh <laughs> Middle child. Middle child problems. Yeah. I mean, good luck on this being half an hour. Um, 
Yeah, I said I, just, I said before we started recording, I'd like this to be a swift one, you know. Yeah, yeah. Swift in, half. In, swift in, half. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's what Episode I'm going to call it. The <laughs> we did it. High five. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> no, it has to be half an hour so yeah. it can be the swift half. Well, anyway. That's Polly's editing problem. Anyway. Oh, God. I've deleted all my editor software. I'm going to have to re-download it. Cool. I mean, once again, dear listener, we're back to normal form in terms of we've tangented. Yeah, what um, were we talking about? So the Crisis Games were... Like, <laughs> we're talking about the Crisis Games like and Greg and our call, like then the, how we're not engaged, yeah. how anti-chain listens to the podcast. Yes, yeah. Um, that's how you're going to find out about it, by the way. We'll do a podcast and just go, hey, guys, so... <laughs> You can't see this, but whoa! Uh, look no, at I, that th- I think it'd be do a YouTube live. Oh, um, radio show? No, um, no, no, no. You no. want to do? Okay. I want to do like the big reveal of whoppa, whoppa. Um, <laughs> anyway, carry how on. else you would do? A... We're not engaged. No. Um, so crisis games. Crisis games. So it's like a political RPG simulation. It's not LARPing because you actually then have. I feel like you're going too complicated in it. You go, guys, pretend to be like prime ministers of different countries, countries and cabinet and have, ministers and stuff, and, and then the major have different one, situations, and mm. you have to. Deal and with we all it. have to submit like orders or proclamations mm. or actions. And there's a team called the gods, and they basically accept action, play out things, make sure things are happening, or spread misinformation. And basically, they're the ones who actually run it. But alongside that, you also had the media team. So you'd have Reuters, who are like the factual people who, if Reuters put something out, you knew that was true. But then there was the BBC News, which may be true, sort of. And then you had Sky News or Fox News. Topically, we actually did the US presidential election of 2016. I remember you telling me this. Yeah, that was quite fun. And we were all the Republican Party factions. It's quite funny. You did that and, at uni. Mm. And, like, that's quite... Like, you know, mm. it's a thing. I was in the drama society. Well, yeah, but we were all... <laughs> I did plays. <laughs> but the Crisis Games was born out of the um, sort of annual, semi-annual uh, Crisis Games that the department actually ran. So you had university professors, yeah. people from um, government agencies came and helped out with a couple of them. That's a fun story that I can't tell. Um, um, Can you tell, dear listener, that he has a politics degree? I don't think it's obvious Obvious, to you. Anyway, back to me. Yes. That's my fun fact. What's your fun fact? My fun fact. I did my fun fact. I got a distinction in my masters. I can do another one if you'd like. Yeah, that's just a good bit of news. That is it. it, Yeah, okay, good news then. Good fun fact. Yeah. We should do that. We should start doing news. Good news! What's your good news of the week? Uh, Do you have any good news? you got a distinction in your... That is, it's good news for everyone. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so back to me. Uh... <laughs> oh, Chris, Chris Chris Davis from work gave me a can of Goose Brewing IPA. That was very nice. Is that your good news? I was really... That was That's re- tragic. <laughs> no, that was really kind of him. Because I've bought him two bottles of Ludlow Gold. And yeah. He, we're now going to start beer swapping, I think. Oh, I'm that's gonna, adorable. I'm going to give him a bottle of Deconeg, which is my favourite Belgian beer. I'll have to remember that for uh, Santa reasons. Mm. Um, <laughs> my, yeah, my fun fact can be, <clears throat> well, since you did one, I was in the Drama Society. I was president of the Drama Society. <laughs> and under my... Uh, this is just me showing off now. Yeah, again. Under <laughs> my um, reign, if you will. Inspired leadership. I will, uh, we raised over £2,000 for charity and won two awards for the university. We won Best Society, Society of the Year and Best Fundraising Event. Because mm. I'm this bitch that good. I was a great chair. You were. I miss the Drama Society. I yeah. miss, well, I'm we were so, going to go again this year, weren't yeah, we? Yeah, I, I make it a point to go and see... Because the Drama Society has a long-standing tradition, <clears throat> going back 50, 60 years, of doing a summer Shakespeare. So in the summer, we do an outdoor Shakespeare in um, this beautiful part of the mm. Keele University. Big up Keel, by the way. I like how he, he very sneakily tried to get out of bed and go get a bottle opener and <laughs> hoped no one would notice. What do you mean no one would notice? I mean, I know. I mean, <laughs> why are you telling them this? Adds, <laughs> adds colour. Okay. Adds flavour. Okay. Anyway, um, so yeah, I always make a point to go to the, the Summer Shakespeare because I was always in them and I always really enjoyed it. And they're always very good. And we were going to go this... Well, we went last year, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, Right when we sort of first started properly dating. I yeah. took you to Shakespeare. Um, and that was funny because there was 
all my friends were there and they were like, who's the boy? <laughs> and at that point, you were no one. Um, <laughs> so I was like, nothing. <laughs> it's fine. It was like, Polly's here with a boy. And literally, I could hear it going around the entire society. Polly's brought a boy. It's like, I mean, it was great because I got cake and I was very charming. It was a wonderful day. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, we yeah. had cake. Yeah. And Richard III. Yes. I must admit, isn't probably one of my favourite shows. Well, the histories are never great, but mm. Richard III was played by my very good friend, Mark Holland. Mm. It was a very good um, version. And I thought he did an excellent job. Mm. And no, it was a good... The, the, the drama, it's always just fun, even mm. if it's even if they're bad, and they're not bad, but if mm. they were bad, it'd still be good. But that was a good day. But mm. we missed out on a lot of stuff, haven't we? Yeah. Going back to the uh, matter at hand, you know. Well, it's, this is going to be a quick rundown of... I mean, what we've been doing. What we've been doing since March. Yeah. So we went to Venice. Yeah. We talked about that on a different podcast. We so will talk about that now. So you've got that to look forward to. Uh, but basically, we went to Venice, mm. and then the world ended. Basically, I mean, was, we had a wonderful two weeks between Venice mm. and lockdown starting. Yeah. Oh, it's quite funny, and I brought I bring this up a lot mm. over the past several months. But I am almost like the last person who had a good, decent birthday. You are. For my <laughs> birthday, I went to Venice. For Mum's birthday, we had Domino's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then since then, it's well, just for gone your downhill. birthday, we also went to the theatre. We also went for a lovely meal with your family. Went for a meal with my friends. Yeah. We went. <laughs> yeah, we went to the theatre. We went out for cocktails. There's so much. That um, we... Did we do anything with your family? No, we had a dinner at home, home with your family. Yeah, before we went. Before we went. But basically, yeah. I had like a week of birthday, and then everyone else's birthday since then was shit. And I, I definitely lorded that over people. I, I was just, I, I like it. I mean, you say you had a last birthday. You had a last holiday. Yeah. You know, we were chatting about that in the office. I was it today, and you know, I know I was went after like places. Um, Portugal and the like, mm-hmm. but you know, others basically went to um, Butlins. Yeah, you know, <laughs> or Cornwall, <laughs> or you know. I mean, we probably places. shouldn't have gone because that was well, a, at, at that point. That was when it was like it's in Venice, and everyone was like, "Oh no, no!" This was before it like was a thing, wasn't it? This was when we didn't quite know. We knew it was well, we serious because it was killing Italians, but it yeah. wasn't quite doing it that fast. But we didn't, and we didn't know they were, whether we were going to get to go to I Venice. I kept checking my phone. I checked probably every five minutes to see if our flight was cancelled. But even before I got on the... Just before I stepped onto the plane proper, yeah. I checked the government website being like... Are we good? Are we, Are we good? good? Is Are the we foreign good? office telling me not to go? And until the foreign office said, don't go, it wasn't going <laughs> to... <laughs> not... <laughs> I could have dealt with not going, probably. It would have been disappointing, oh, no, but I could have dealt have. with it. Nah. Well, no, I'd have, I'd have been sad, but we'd have found something fun to do instead. We'd have, we'd have figured something out, you know what I mean? Even if it was like, oh, we're going to Birmingham. I, I don't know. I don't but know. it was I'm... more like, what if we get stuck in Venice? <laughs> what if they don't let us come home? No, nah, it's been fun because there's been two, there's three lads in Milan who were teaching out there, mm-hmm. and they've been stuck. But the reason they've been stuck is they basically were offered the chance to get out. And they didn't take it. Yeah. For whatever reason. Y- you'd have got out, mm. but you'd have just needed to be prompt about it. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing with the vet... I mean, I don't know when... How much we talk about it in the actual pod that we did, but... In hindsight, getting back was just comical. It was hilarious. Yeah. Uh, and the whole thing was just well, well worth it. And everybody I've spoken to since has said... To every time they've been to Venice in terms of the crowds, the costs, everything. Mm. We did a, such a sterling job of going at the right we time. We went at literally the right time. Any later, I think it would have been awful. Any earlier would yeah. have been huge. fine, perfect, but crowded because it was Venice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we went at the best time. So we, so did, we did that. And then lockdown happened. And so we, you moved um, in. Well, yeah, I did, I did move in with you yeah. for <laughs> two months because... We did a couple of weeks, and then it was like, uh, <laughs> we can't I go. miss my boyfriend. <laughs> so I... Um, Most people would probably... I mean, it's fascinating what they say about lockdown. There's either two status of relationships at the end of it. You're either married with kids, or you're going to be uh, it's like you're divorced. A, isn't it like you're either, you either get pregnant or you get a divorce? There's no in-between. <laughs> yeah. Because there's quite a few people I've seen on like Instagram and stuff have been like, uh, got preggy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Preggy, got preggy, got... That's an awful way of putting it. Preggers. 
Preggers, yeah. Mm. Um, so. Which is to put it out there for again, whoever's listening. Not you're, pregnant. Not pregnant. Yeah, right. <laughs> Just, uh, just, uh, why did you bring that up? Just why is this? I'm not... uh, I just, again, given, I, right. I, the, the more it, I learn about our listening audience, the more I to work make out it abundantly it's... clear for all who listen, we are neither engaged nor expecting a baby. No, we are just two idiots sitting here doing a podcast, drinking beer, yeah, I, I... and eating mince pies. Not pregnant, not engaged. I moved in with you. Yes. And live with you and your family mm. for two lovely months, mm. which was very fun and mm. very silly, and also very mm. nice because it's something that we wouldn't have gotten to do. Mm. That's it. It's like finding the silver linings within all the shit, isn't it? Because if I feel very lucky, actually, if the year had gone how it was supposed to go, if mm. you will, I'd have still been in Nottingham <laughs> doing yeah. my masters. We'd have seen each other like every two, two weeks, weeks for like two days at a time. Yeah, long weekends, if which that. was fine. But it was really nice to get to move in together and spend lots of time together. And we certainly we feel like we've missed the summer we would have had in Nottingham. I met yeah I didn't um, I didn't get my summer in the city which I'm we didn't get really to Epine. about. What was all the things we had planned? Epine, we were going to go to France. Yeah, we were going to do. Yeah, we'd have done a not a hell of a lot more, but we I, certainly would have done a well, city we, break as well. We made the best of the city. It's probably a good thing anyway because it's saved us money now. And we'd have all gone to Italy together. Oh, yeah, I was coming with you to your parents, wasn't I? Mm. That would have been comical. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> in, like, a good way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that would have been fun. Um, no, there is the silver lining. We've spent a lot of time together. We've yeah. had a lot more fun and adventures. We've, I think, like every... We've discovered what's on our doorstep. We've done Bishop's Castle. We've done... We've Lodge done Lodge. the entirety of Shropshire. Yeah. We have, and the only reason that we haven't done... More. More further afield is because, you know... Hashtag lockdown life. And being um, sensible about it is, I, I like to think, even though we've safe. done a lot, yeah, we've not, we, we've not been up to no. Manchester. We've not gone to cities. We've been no, we've been we've been very safe, been very sensible, mm. sticking to all the the guidelines. Oh, the amount of hand sanitizer. Yeah, literally, a washing hands, masks on. Mm. You know, we've been we've been good about, it, even though we have done a lot of days out and stuff. Like you say, we've been good about it. And mm. it's been nice to actually have that bit of normal. Yeah. It's just like, ah, yes, we're going on a day out. Okay, yeah, we have to do it in a mask and you have to stay away from everyone. But we're going on a day out. Mm-hmm. Well, hey. Mm. Um, so, no, we had a lot, we've had a lot of good days out, really. I think so. And then we went camping. <laughs> yeah. Um... We were supposed to go camping in April. Well, yeah, we and got, got cancelled three obviously. times. April got cancelled, so we rebooked it for September. (laughs) And then the weekend that we were going to go... Well, the week that we were going to go, basically, the campsite flooded. It rained too much in Wales. Shocking, I know. Yeah, I know. It rained in Wales, and it flooded the campsite, and it was just not good. So we we got cancelled again, and we were like, shit. So we basically just rang him and we're like, can we please come? We All we want to do is go camping. And he was like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so as we long as camping. you go on the hard tack and you just... Yeah, he was just like, don't drive in the, the field and you'll be happy. And we yeah. were like, sick. So, we so went... for a campsite that should have held like 250 tents, apparently. There was like apparently, three of us there. there. was, yeah, no more than like four a day. And it was like, yeah. brilliant. It was brilliant. Yeah, it was good. Um, a lovely campsite as Stunning well. Stunning view. Because it was like basically on a cliff overlooking mm. a glorious bay. Yes. That you couldn't get down to. You couldn't go to the beach, but you could look at it. The photo suggested that you could, but I suspect you'd have needed some perseverance the and a o- willingness to lose a shoe. Yeah, we spoke to a couple that was a few tents down from us because, you know, that's what you do. You make friends on the campsite. Yes. Um, And they were like, yeah, we went down there. Wouldn't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> no. And there didn't seem to be an easy route, even though there was a house right on the beach. Well, that's the thing, because you look down and there was a house and there was some more, because they had some like tents that were already put up that you could also hire. Mm. And they had some some of those really far down. So you're like, surely there's a way, there's to, a way to get down there, but just couldn't figure it out. No. And to be honest with you, it was rainy and windy. So we were like... Well, the first day was sunny. beautiful. It was sunny. The first day warm. and the last day were gorgeous. And then the two days in between, it pissed it down. It pissed it down and it was windy. And it was so windy. It was, the tent was so windy, it felt like it was going to fly away. It wasn't good. To the point where apparently, I don't remember this, but I woke you up in the middle of the night to go, I don't like it. No. <laughs> Which you had no sympathy. No. <laughs> Well, I did because I felt exactly the same as you, but it was like, I can't. 
I don't remember waking you up. I genuinely don't remember that. I, I can remember on the first day looking at the tent and because it was at that point trying to be quite windy. Mm. Things to myself, if we come back to a tent, we've done well here. Yeah. And Having did, put the guy did, ropes and everything, it was fine. It wasn't going anywhere. No, it wasn't. What with all the stuff in there. It was but just it, noisy. It, you suddenly became very aware of how a proper tent, a uh, canvas tents can be. Mm quite safe and sh- strong and secure not shift yeah where a lightweight plastic thing is lovely but also mm. isn't really but no uh, it was funny someone uh forgot the camera step mm. and the accoutrement that came with cooking someone forgot those oh the tea bags and salt and stuff no we bought tea bags you were supposed to bring some no because i think no, was no 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 oh, no no you no. said we were gonna buy them you volunteered to bring tea bags and salt and oil and like you know, various bits. No, we I no 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 no. Because we no, got no, we no, bought no, spray. No. Yeah, we bought some. Yeah, that's what we said we were gonna do. No, you said you were gonna bring two bags. Mm, no, I definitely forgot the camping stove. But... You forgot the camping stove. No, so we, we had to go buy a new one. Yeah, so that's from what... millets. Millet. I mean, <laughs> or was it millets? It was millets. But yeah, and that was good actually because then we bought a light. The light was the MVP of the whole camping <laughs> trip. We bought we, before that we had either the cameras on our phones, mm. which were slowly dying, dying yeah, because we didn't have anything and... to plug them into. Or a wind-up torch, which was shit. So it we... was more the fact that you couldn't put the wind-up torch hanging up. This was a no, proper... this is an LED l- light with a hook. Hook, which... Was... Suddenly changed the game. game. It was brilliant. You could actually read in bed in a tent that was still... Mm-hmm. And then, well, you, Jelly. Say, you mm-hmm. say that, but the airbed deflated on us. Oh, that was... <laughs> we, we also middle of the popped night. our airbed somehow. Uh, middle of the night, trying to put plasters on this. Yeah, literally trying to plug the holes. And then you're there going, but plasters are at <laughs> yeah, <laughs> air tight. <laughs> so we basically woke up to the floor, uh, which th- was you know three times on the delightful when you're oh, on your bum. Just just get an Airbnb. It wasn't good. So basically, time. we had a great time camping, but also we had a terrible time camping. For a first camping trip, we've learned lessons. Yeah, I mean, we had a lovely the the area was very nice. Yeah, we we went to sort of the North Wales end of the line bit oh, Porth My Dog was lovely Porth My Dog was very everywhere we went was actually very pretty the only yeah. bad, bad place was um, Abbasoch Abbasoch yeah which was basically Cheshire crossed with Cornwall yeah Abbasoch was very much not to like shit on Abbasoch but, it but was, we're going to but we're going to um, but it was very much the, the English tourist destination yeah and you could tell yeah and it was not, not, I mean, we were only there for like 20 minutes, I think. We were like, no, we don't like this, let's go. Yeah. Um, but Pusali was nice, Quick Eth was nice. Mm. Um, that beach uh, we went to on the first night with the fish and chip shop. Oh. Abadaran. Abadaran, that and then with the bakery lush. as well. There was a bakery. It was a Sunday night. <laughs> it was like seven o'clock on a Sunday night, and this bakery was open. Mm. And not only was it open, but it had cake. And it was good cake. And it was delicious. Your lemon cake. drizzle was so wonderful. So we sat on the beach. My ice bun was good. We sat on the beach and ate cake while watching the sunset. Yes. I don't think that gets better. No. Does it? And the fish and chips were standing by the stream. Yeah, it was so nice. Everything was good. And the National Trust car park was free. Because yeah. guess who's a member? <laughs> but no. And then, yeah, we ventured out a bit as well to like Carnarvon. And... We, and Anglesey was lovely, Blue Morris. Yes, yes. We had a um, proper. And then we did a lovely drive, like a Sunday drive on the way back. Oh, through Snowdonia and Clambellis. Um, just like taking our time mm. and just driving through beautiful countryside, which was lovely. We've not done badly with it. No, we, the thing that is. That was a really nice break, actually. I mean, we went to Puff Madog again for the third time and had fantastic brownies, coffees. Cake. Oh, yeah, we did. I'd forgotten mm. about Oh, yeah, because I wanted to buy that necklace, didn't I? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> there was a necklace. We went to Puff Madog three times once, once, once for a look. Once to have a Puff Madog time, once second time to, to buy, buy a, a fucking camping stove. Pardon my French. Um, and the third time, so I could go buy a necklace. Mm. And then we found a cute little cafe that sold amazing brownies. Yes. Um, I mean, we also cooked steaks on a campfire. We, had, we roasted garlic and Yeah, we onions. did a proper, proper steak tea. That was, that was good. It was good. And we also did proper camping breakfast with oh, like beans, sausage and fry bread. Proper and bacon. barbecue beans. And... That was lush. Yeah, we ate. We did well. We did actually. very well. And then, yeah, so that was September. And then since then, we've both sort of, you've been back at work. Yes. Good. I've started work. Yes. Um, that's just been rolling with the motions, really. I, do you know, I, 
I feel like we we are still having some sort of normality, and that's getting me through a lot of things. Oh, absolutely. Um, I feel like we're actually doing a lot that would we would be doing anyway. Yeah, I um, think so. I'm going to try to keep it simple. Things like date nights once a week. Not, nothing major, but just... No, it's, but... it's having something special to look forward to. Mm. That sort of thing, really. Yeah, but no. Mm. It was good. Yeah. Uh, what we got to look forward to? Um, um, well, I mean... So we're going to try and do some more podcasts now. Let, let, let's as we stay to the podcast. We're going to try and do some more podcasts. Yeah. So there's two I'm... more to come that... I need to edit. So I'm determined to make this a reasonably regular thing. You said once every uh, once every month. two weeks, I yeah. think is a good aim. Aim. If we don't do that though, I'm not gonna get mad about no, it. No, but so. it, once a month at least. Oh yeah, once a month is absolutely achievable. Well, well, basically once or twice a month depends. We'll we'll call you. So yeah. If you don't call us, we'll call you. Um, uh, when it comes to the podcast. But we'll definitely do one before. One in December, separately, because I'll want something to look forward to, because I'll be full-time doing manic Christmas stuff. Yes, Christmas um, Christmas is a-coming. The geese are getting fat. Uh, we'll do a Christmas podcast as well. Yeah, so Christmas. We'll, we'll just, we'll just we'll wear some Santa it. hats. Even though you won't see them. But we will. We'll take a picture. <gasps> I'll get me reindeer. I am. Uh, the, uh, my prized possession. I still think you should continue the family tradition of the Harrison Game Show. It's not... A f- right. Dear listener, tell me this. Very quickly. So, at my house around Christmas, we do a lot of quizzes and a lot of like block blockbusters is usually the way we go and it always ends badly. Um, <laughs> so I joined it. <laughs> yeah, and then Tom, you Tom came for Christmas. Uh, well, he came for Christmas Eve, and we did a family quiz. And the winner of the quiz, we never usually have prizes mm. because Tom was coming. The family were like, "Oh, we have to make it fun." So we got <laughs> had to be a prize. So there was a prize. The prize was some chocolate and some like really nice reindeer ears. And we won, so you got the chocolate, and yeah. I got the reindeer ears, and now Tom is insistent that I, like... Put them back on the line. Put the reindeer ears back on the line, and I'm sure you'll all agree well, with me, that's not happening, because they're really nice reindeer ears. Yeah, but that'll just make you want to win. Yeah, but what if I don't win? Well, if you don't win, you, you've you got to win them back the next year. No, this is bollocks, they're mine. But if you do win, you get... No, they're just my reindeer ears, new prize. It's I mean, just new prize. I will, I, I'm more than willing to buy a little trophy. Yeah, the we'll do. Yeah, I'd be happy. I'd be fine with like a trophy with like Harrison Christmas quiz winner on. Yeah, and then that that gets passed around every year. Yeah. that I am more than okay with. Mm, okay. I just don't want to give up my reindeer. Ears. Okay, fine, fine. Because they are mine. You did look endearing, though. Yeah, You're so funny. But anyway, no. Um, we will speak to you very soon. Yes. We hope you enjoyed listening. Yes. Um, just for the record again, not engaged, not pregnant. Thank you for listening. You've like, all been fabulous. Like, share, subscribe. Do all that crap. Don't not crap. Sorry. Thing, Good stuff. The stuff. Uh, and we will catch you on the next one. Bye! See ya!